Hello, welcome back to my channel. I have had a delivery of um, a deck that I could not make up my mind about getting. And I'll be honest, I thought I'd missed it because it was a Kickstarter. And somebody highlighted me to the fact that it was on Etsy and there were still a few left. So here's how it arrived. It came in this beautiful box. I have opened it um, and taken off all the polythene and that's as far as I've gone and emptied the polystyrene from inside here. You'll probably recognise it as soon as I open the lid. But I thought it came in such a lovely box, I couldn't not show this. So we have in here, thank you for your purchase um, from the creator. I'm not sure how I'm pronouncing this. Emucdesign.com, maybe? So this is um, a discount code and tells me where to get to the book, should I want to see it, for the deck that is peeking out from underneath. So let's just go. Um, it's also come with, and I wasn't expecting these, so it's come with some pins. There's a hat. They're, they're metal, of course. Um, and this one, which is a spray of flowers. It's almost like a fleur de lay type sign. My dog is also thirsty. This is the choice of real time, right? Um, not having a fancy recording setup. So we have that one. I thought they were really quite cute. Was not expecting those. I mean, maybe they were in the description on Etsy and I just failed to spot that, but I do like a good badge. And this I thought was really cute as well. So we've got a uh, kind of, you know, that protection symbol, or it's referred to as a protection symbol, and we have um, a little incense cone. Now, I don't know what it smells like. And of course, a little thank you stick on the back. And this is a gift for you. Thank you for your trust. I'm guessing this, is, this must be part of the Kickstarter campaign, so thank you for your trust. Um, it's really delicate smell, so I'm not sure if that's rose. It's very delicate and my sense of smell is not brilliant until I, you know, get my big old nostrils right in there. There's nothing on the back of that one, so it's just a little wooden disc. I guess you pop it on there and burn. Um, that's probably a way of breaking in your deck. So here's the deck. It is the Baroque Tarot. Um, so some of you will recognise it. Yes, the gilding. I honestly don't know. Let me see design. Um, so 2022. So I honestly don't know um, what version we're on now or not, but somebody scared me as well when they said they weren't sure if it was going to be produced again. Like, this is it. So when it's gone, it's gone. Um, so that was enough to send me off to spend some money. This deck calls the user to care for their soul with much love, to open their heart and minds, to learn their lessons and better themselves and, uh, and to have faith in all that will unravel as it should it's quite hard to read in the light there but oh there you go it's beautiful gold highlights so we have a tarot book in here there's the backs here we go i'll go from back to front so we have colored images um finishing on the swords coming through major arcana so we have the um colored image the name upright and reversed we have the planetary aspect here. We have some writing. So the fool is withering like they haven't lived for a while. They represent the conscious walk into the next life path, not knowing what's ahead, but accepting the risk and being ready to cross the river into a new beginning. The dog represents what you've learned and what you've earned and learned on your last journey that will take that you will take with you. Then we have the first meaning there. In reverse. The dog is an attachment or limiting belief that has kept you back. Don't be afraid of losing something as you dive into the rushing water to start again. If the dog loyally follows through the river with us, it was meant to be. Interesting. So reverse meaning of the symbolism in the card. And then we have our kind of basic keywords there. This looks like a spread. Yes, there it is. The Celtic cross spread. Here we have the past, present and future spread, single card spread, recommendations. I guess this is just about working with a deck about Brock Tarot. Um, 
second Kickstarter, Goldfold Deck, expresses and celebrates the divine seeking salvation from the dark and the path from poverty of the soul to spirit, to spiritual richness and fulfilment. When it comes to soul care, it's important to acknowledge pain, lonesomeness and darkness. Acknowledgement and actively working through the hardship rather than denying the hardship are some of the steps towards healing. The deck depicts our morality and our higher guides wishing to help us. It's a certain cold warmth to it, a ray of salvation and a prompt to worship and love the scripture. I will admit it does definitely have that kind of um, coolness to it and darkness to it that is um, clearly an aesthetic that I've been liking. One that I was sort of thinking I didn't need any more decks of, but here we are. We have the, um, I'm not sure if it's gold, I'm going to call it sort of a coppery colour. It's not quite gold, it's um, brassy tone. Brass? No, brass, that sounds cheap, doesn't it? Rich gold, maybe? Should we call it rich gold for me? And um, from a um, cardstock perspective, it's quite thick. So it is a thick cardstock, it's not linen, it's smooth. We've got gold foiling on the cards. So let's bring you down, because I know it's quite dark here on this winter's day in January. The card's going to tell you what they are, so we'll just flip through. Um, let me just see if the lights are any better. Hang on. Is that better? Get quite a shadow then, don't we? I think that gives you a truer picture. So we'll go. So you can see what I mean when I said these are really quite dark, murky, muddy cards. It's not quite the sunny aspects that we see within these ones, like, like the chariot that is really quite um, foreboding, isn't it? Strength card's beautiful. Wheel. Death card. Beautiful temperance. So the colours popping in that one. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the tar tarot volatile, or volatile, volatile if you're British. <laughs> Very RWS inspired esque. So there's really not a lot to say about the cards. Um, there's nothing really jumping out of the images. So we can, oops, keep going. And then we have the page, the knight, queen, and the king. They're all pretty standard. Onto the cups. The art aesthetic, it uh, reminds me a bit of um, Pamarikin's, Joyce Eakin's deck, Tower of the Spirit, the Heindel Tarot, and the Shimmering Veil. And the kind of aesthetics of the art in some of this. Probably three great decks I should have pulled out to see if it pairs with, but um, I haven't. Now this one, um, Rochelle over at Amethyst Ascension, she has this deck and she, she absolutely loves it. Um, she has influenced a few of my purchases lately, to be fair. Um, but I couldn't help myself. I, I you know, I stayed, stayed away. <laughs> and what do they call it? FOMO. There it was. It's the Three of Swords, I think, in this deck. It's the card that kind of really 
from a magpie perspective that got me. So here we go, we're coming into the swords. That one. I just love that card. Um, I don't know what it is about it, the whole composition. I don't like swords sticking into hearts and things, but from an art aesthetic, really like it. I do like my three of swords to depict, to be depicted in another way. I don't like that as a standard standalone, but just as a beautiful image. And I guess kind of the same with the ten of swords because um, that's not really quite all that that card means to me it doesn't mean death in quite such a severe way that's our king okay so what decks have i pulled out to see what i might play with let's have a look okay first up we have um seasons of the witch maybon edition just thought for fun we'll see it's a very different aspect and um, from an artistry point of view so let's have a look. We have Ten of Swords with Coven and Two of Pentacles. Coven, I am you and you are me. When we come together, we are all we seek. Hmm, don't know about the message. Art style is clearly a knot. I'm not sure about that message at all. What do we have here? The Emperor with the Crow and the Queen of Wands. And the Crow says... Pay close attention to the winds. There's a message making its way. Not hitting the mark for me instantly. For me, there's a no. But I don't know about you. You may be getting something different from that. And of course, that's all down to how the cards speak. However, the messages in the um, Maybon Oracle, I really, really like. Um, now, I've pulled out a second deck, which you probably wouldn't expect for this either. And I'm just curious to see if this works. Um, so I have pulled out the Oracles of Shadows and Light. Just curious because it's one that's in the back of my cupboard, hasn't been out for a little while due to come into rotation. So I'm literally pulling out things that are in the back of my cupboard that you don't see normally when I pair things up. Um, so let's try again. So we have Three of Pentacles, Fairy of the Green World, The Natural World Needs You, and The Queen of Cups. That might be, although again, imagery, not particularly brilliant, but message-wise that might be a bit better with the, um, you know, materialistic, earthy kind of elements there with The Natural World Needing You and The Queen of Cups and the kind of emotional side of things. Five of Wands with out trick-or-treating we're here <laughs> that forever phrase with our seven of wands so again artistry wise not doing it for me eight of pentacles with our fairy lantern a clear solution ahead um, and our knight of cups moving forwards mm, again i'm not sure but equally <laughs> interestingly for me right now this deck um feels very alien that's a strange thing for me to be saying to you it feels quite alien to me because i haven't put any energy in it i haven't given it any time i'm not sure but it's feeling alien so that the messages equally feel completely uh, discombobulated let's try something else okay so we've got the garden of lucid daydreaming from patrick valenza um just this one's intuitive. So see what you get from your cards. We have the Ace of Swords with 27. If you want to go numerology, you might make that nine. Then we have the Six of Pentacles. Now she clearly looks like she's being um, whispered to in both directions, doesn't she? So we do have communication. We definitely have some communication here and how you choose to do that when it comes to moving forwards with your um, charitable donation. Seven of Pentacles, hiding behind masks and outfits with the King of Wands. So with our Seven of Pentacles, what you're setting intentions for, not all is what you see. Um, and then we have our King of Wands sat on his throne at the end, trying to, you know, oversee everything that's going on. Mm. Again, it was a wild card from an art perspective for you all to look at. So here we have our Two of Cups with um, 
I don't know, we just call that I just call that one the blue bird, the flying fish. And he's following definitely looks like he's following him of his own wish. And we have our Knight of Wands. So with our two of cups. So is this Like the energy of romance coming in with a new relationship, budding relationship, but is it attracting the right or the wrong type of romance or the right, the wrong or right type of, you know, are you setting out on the right foot for your relationship? I'm not sure. What are you thinking? I'm definitely not feeling this one particularly. I'm feeling it better than the first two. Better than the first two. Okay, so we have the... Um, Oracle of the Rose by Zara de Rose. This is one of Etsy, which I absolutely adore. It comes in from Australia. It isn't particularly cheap to get, but oh my goodness, oh, I so love this. This was another Amethyst. This is an Amethyst, maybe do it set up right here. <laughs> um, I don't know that she's matched these up yet, but this, these two decks, I'm very grateful. Thank you for sharing them. Okay, so we have the star with the full moon and the world. Aesthetically pleasing on the eye, I'm thinking. That's a really nice little spread there. Um, you could definitely spend some time journaling around this one, couldn't you? Especially the beauty of the star guidance, the full moon illumination, and then the um, world, you know, what's next on that merry-go-round of life. With our ace of wands, we've got disconnected, and our page of wands... Disconnected, discombobulated is a good word to put in there as well, isn't it? So with our Queen of Pentacles, we've got Innocence and the Nine of Wands. And we've also got a little rabbit there. So there is the element of Innocence moving into here with our Nine of Wands on the end. So that kind of defending of Innocence as well. Um, you know, um, and, and that's not in a sordid way. That would be for me as I see or feel that would be more in a, um, you know, remaining innocent in your inquiries, how you move forwards, what you're doing, what you're asking, what you're wanting to achieve um, and setting the boundaries around how you protect that for yourself. We have the moon with the end. <laughs> the night is here and judgment. Oh, that's quite a dark reading there for me. <laughs> the moon the end and judgment. Well, hopefully the moon is illuminating that you've come to the end of that cycle um, and how you've played out in that is how you will be judged going forwards. Your karma will come get you. Lady karma is out for your bum. Four of swords with integrity and eight of cups. Yeah, they go quite nicely. I think I'm preferring out of all of them. This is my favourite. Um, and I think you might all agree. You might not. But um, Ace of Cups with Grounded and the Eight of Wands. So um, I've got one more deck, which is a tarot that um, I thought easily is going to do this as well. So let me just get that one out. OK, so we have the Stretch Tarot. This is the one that I got recently from Make Playing Cards. Love it. Um goes beautifully with the oracle that we've just shown actually in fact I did a reading with them this morning um to one of Amethyst's um moon readings that she shared in her Facebook group here we have the lovers with the three of pentacles and we have keywords on this one so we have work and then we have nine of swords <laughs> nobody wants to be working at that relationship too hard do they it should come naturally um seven of swords with restlessness from our page of wands and king of swords so i think they do go again aesthetically i don't think there's an issue here but i just wanted to see how they work because this one you could use as an oracle with the keywords in it i feel and the way that the pictures are on this one um but i was definitely wanting to just pull out something that i don't normally pull out um i don't think i've got any other oracles around that I would use other than the Archeo and that one I don't use a lot so I'm thinking maybe not. Um, six of Swords with Skill and Three of Wands. Okay oh I didn't say did I? I'm so sorry useless. Um, <laughs> best review yet this one. 
Um, they shuffle. They've got the ASMR shuffle sound that I adore. Um, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but let me just... I think you can hear it there. So, that noise. Oh, I love that noise. Just... They slip and they make a very nice shuffle noise. So there you go. That is the Baroque Tarot. Um, I hope you like it. Have you got it? I'm sorry about the shadow. Um, but either way, I hope this gave you some inspiration to get it if you've been on the fence or to help you make up your mind that you don't need it anymore. Um, and if you have got Terra Volatile and you do pair them up, let me know how you get on with those as well, because I'm still having problems getting that deck to talk to me. <laughs> Until the next one, take care. Bye.